Yes, sir, we're here. And I know that Cobra Kai is one of the most memed on shows of all time, but don't let all the corniness take away from the fact that this show has elite level hands. But today, we're gathered here to cover all of the hardest fights in all of season 6. And before we begin, make sure to smash the subscribe button if y'all want to see me cover other Cobra Kai's fights, and I gotcha. So the scene kicks off with Kenny playing at the arcade until Robbie magically appears with his hands in the air and Kenny was not in the mood for any games because he leaves without saying a single word. And bro, I'm still trying to figure out why Robbie was trying to convince Kenny to leave Cobra Kai even though Robbie was the one that recruited him. Like this man Silva already manipulated Kenny's brain, he's not gonna listen to anything nope. you say. Hey listen Kenny, if you wanna win the Sekai Taikai, you have to join Miyagi-Do, there's just no other way. Shut your s- but then out of nowhere, Sean comes in to back up his brother and he had Robbie stuttering like Mike Tyson reading a book. Like I know for a fact Robbie was getting flashbacks of getting whooped by Sean back in Juvie cause he had bro looking like Zuko from Avatar and if I was Robbie I would've just thrown hands on the spot I'm not letting that slide bro. But Sean was holding it down cause he told Robbie to leave his brother alone or else he was gonna have him looking like Mojo Jojo. And hey I'm not even mad at Sean cause he's just being a W brother looking out for his little bro. But I'm not messing with Sean either cause he's built like Mark Henry there's no way he's actually a teenager look at him like you're telling me this six foot eight giant is in high school like nah i need someone to double check his birth certificate so then after sean and kenny leave the arcade all of robbie's friends start telling him not to let go so easily giving him that kobe motivation jobs not finished and robbie obviously takes that as a clear answer to go and confront kenny for the second time so Robbie pulls up to play some good old baseball, but little does he know he's in for a little treat because he tries hitting Kenny with that talk no jutsu, but it only results in Sean getting infuriated. And then Robbie looks over at Kenny for some assistance, but he's like, Oh, don't look at me. I told you not to come out here in the first place. No, -uh, now look. And things de-escalate real quick because Sean gives Robbie a light shove, and in response, he's like, That's not the Miyagi Do way. And now that stuff is kind of heating up, Kenny tells his brother, Hey Sean, he's not worth it, let's get out of here. But then Sean is like, nah, I don't really feel like it. But then they get to squabbling right away because Robbie hits a gut punch and then this man Kenny goes in for a Superman punch. Like bro, who do you think you are? My guy Kenny really beat up Anthony, someone who doesn't even know karate and thinks he's smooth all of a sudden. Like Kenny's doing way too much, he doesn't have a single play where he needs to be moving like this bro. So Robbie flings Kenny to the ground like a fly and then hits a weave block block only for him to get grabbed and then slammed right into the fence and then right as sean is about to finish him he gets met with a majestic leg sweep from miguel who trips sean and makes him eat straight concrete and dog i really want to know where the security is you're telling me we see two people laid out and there's not a single security guard in sight are you serious right now bro so now Miguel and Kenny get into a little encounter and it starts off with a wee for Miguel and it only takes a couple of blocks to push away Kenny. And then Miguel proceeds to punch this ball for some reason. Like bro, what was the point of that? You could have just ducked right under. We are not gonna put you inside of an edit. I've already seen enough. And Kenny is really a level 1 NPC with no badges because he literally gets sent to the ground with a single punch from Miguel. Like you're telling me Terry Silver is your sensei? Nah, I'm pretty sure even Stingray has more hands than Kenny. I mean, this man Miguel was on a wheelchair not too long ago. You should not be on the floor right now. Get up! But anywho, Kenny gets confronted by Tori and Sam who try getting him to join Cobra Kai, but we already know Kenny is on his villain arc right now. He's not joining the good side. So then Kenny tries skedaddling away, but he gets tripped right onto the floor. And bro, you could just tell Kenny was mad tight. My guy was literally two seconds away from unleashing his inner Chris Brown, but Sean had to tell him to calm down. Bro, we have to get out of here. If I get caught by security, I'm not coming out of jail anytime time soon. They said my bill is gonna be a million dollars. So the two crash outs finally leave the area and then the rest of Miyagi Do start chopping it up with each other. And bro, I really thought I'd never see the day Tori and Sam would be on the same team after how Tori gave Sam PTSD from the school fight. Like she really made Sam have nightmares from season 2 and almost made her quit karate when she pulled out Wolverine's whole arsenal. So after that little altercation, we see Kenny taking out all of his anger on this boxing bag and Sean is surprised from that last fight cause he did not know Kenny had that dog in him. But then he asks Kenny, yo bro, where did you learn all of this kung fu from? I need you to put me on. But then Kenny just responds with, it's the way of the fist, strike first, strike hard, no mercy. Huh? And Sean being the only normal person in this entire show with an actual functioning brain is like, 
That is the stupidest thing I've ever heard. And to sum it up, Sean basically tells Kenny to lock in before he ends up in juvie and turns out just like he did. And Kenny actually comes to his senses like Omni-Man and we see him join Miyagi Do in abandoned Cobra Kai. And everyone was just standing there in shock. They couldn't believe what they were seeing right now. I know that ain't who I think it is. Like you know the war between the dojos is serious when we have Chosen and Johnny team up with Daniel to take down Cobra Kai, all of his ops in one team. This man Daniel really created the Cobra Kai Avengers to take down Kreese cause literally everyone and their moms joined Miyagi Do. We have Robbie, Hawk, Tori and Kenny, what more can we ask for? And you may be asking right now, who are they training this hard to fight for? Well let me introduce you to Quan, one of my favorite characters. And before we move on to the real action, make sure to hit the subscribe button if you haven't already. So we transition to episode 3 where we see Kreese training some Cobra Kai students in Japan and he sees some potential in some kid named Kwan, so he starts testing my boy. Are your lungs bursting yet? Yes, that's it! Good. You can thank Mr. Kwan for that. You're just ruining it. You're ru Look at my lips, you're ruining it. And in result, one of the students starts pressing Kwan, asking why he's making them do a punishment. Hey bro, if you don't run your pockets right now, I will smack that goofy out of you. And even though Kwan wasn't the aggressor, he still gets shoulder checked and then tumbles down the stairs and gets embarrassed in front of everyone. But hold on, this was all part of Kreese's master plan because he wanted to see if Kwan would strike back and do something about it. But bro, even Kim wasn't sure about letting Kreese into Cobra Kai because why is he 70 years old and this invested into karate? I mean, I mean, Ankh literally faked his death with some jello and then broke out of jail just for the Sekai Tekai. I gotta respect the dedication. Let the games begin. <laughs> So Quan obviously starts getting pissed at Kreese for what just happened, but then he tells him to take all that anger and give it a purpose. But now this is the official start of Quan's origin story. Like my dog, Kreese really channels some sort of anime power up inside of Quan, cause look at how mad this man is. You would think someone broke into his house or something. Like relax dude, take, take it, it easy man. man. So Quan tells everyone to square up, and look at him blocking all of these kicks with minimal effort. He's not even trying for real. But then Quan smacks bro in the leg, and look at this man's facial expressions. He knew he wasn't built for this job and look at Quan talking crazy like where was all of this energy before this man Chris really has the ability to train anyone and build them into a monster he should have just stayed behind bars look what he's teaching these kids bro but then Quan hits a mean karate kick and starts emoting right after like hey you can call me an L mans but if I'm these two right here I would have just dipped the scene I'm not trying to get my bone snapped in half and end up like Miguel so Quan hits them with a you guys are trash and then buddy tries a kick but Quan knocks him to the ground and then follows up with a nasty left hook. But even after beating everyone to a pulp, Quan is like, nah, nah that's, that's not, not enough. enough. Cause he rushes in with the cleanest double kick I've done ever seen. Like nah, this man Quan has to be the coldest character in the entire Cobra Kai franchise. He solos Miguel, Robbie, Jaden Smith, and Chang. See, that's glazing. I'm not gonna lie, bro. That's glazing, bro. I mean, if we're really being honest right now, who's checking him at the Sekai Takai? Dimitri? <laughs> And Quan was really clip farming cause he had absolutely no reason to cut off this man's breathing, crush his lungs, and then snap his wrist. Like someone called the officials, the fight is over bro. But to put the cherry on top, this man Quan hits a 360 spinning kick. And there's actually no way this man is still alive after that insane combo. Like how is there no medics in the vicinity? Someone hand this man a chug jug, let him regenerate to full HP at least. And Chris is really in the back pretending like he didn't just see his student catch three bodies at once. Like if we're being honest, he's the root cause of everything. Don't act like we can't see you, unk. So episode 4 starts off with Miyagi Do having a competition to figure out which 6 members should compete at the Sekai Tekai at Barcelona. And basically everyone's main objective is to bring back 2 flags from the force to determine the finalists for the tournament. And bro I knew it was about to get real spicy as soon as Mike Barnes told us that there were no referees at all. So pretty much you could turn into John Cena and break someone's neck and get away with it. If I was Dimitri I would stay away from Hawk at all costs. But Cobra Kai is not Cobra Kai without any conflicts because this man and Dimitri randomly decides to start some beef with Hawk all because he didn't apply to MIT. Like why in the world is Dimitri throwing a fit all of a sudden? It's his choice where he goes, not yours. My boy Hawk's just trying to get up in them frat parties with Kyler. He does not mess with you anymore. So the race kicks off with everyone skedaddling up the forest and look at Hawk and Kenny putting in that work. They're out here moving like Captain America and Black Panther in Infinity War. Like we all know that Hawk on top of his head gives him 10 plus agility points but that color wave has to go immediately. What's this? 
Like, Eli definitely has the same barber as Kevin Durant. He's just messing his stuff up for no reason. Like, what happened to the iconic black and red combo? I need that back ASAP, bro. I miss it. So then the cameraman pans over to Kenny, who's holding his stomach because he had too much of that Taco Bell last night. And my man is straight up begging to take a dump, but the person inside is not coming out. And bro, I did not expect this, but this man, Kenny, randomly just crops his pants. Like, nah, they did my man so dirty. Even Kenny was appalled as to what just happened. But I know... Oh, Anthony is gonna have a field day at school tomorrow. He's gonna be calling Kenny poopy pants in science class and there's nothing he can do about it. Like Kenny's downfall actually has to be studied because how did he go from obliterating the Hawk in season 5 to then cropping his pants in broad daylight? Like I'm not gonna lie, if I'm Kenny, I'm fighting the script writers and why did Kenny even agree to act the scene out in the first place? Even Devin saw all of it. Y'all would never see me ever again. So then we switch over to the Hawk who finally arrives and grabs the flag only for him to get kicked by none other than Dimitri. But then they instantly start talking smack to each other and Hawk is like, we're not going to Barcelona together? Okay. And then both of them proceed to start fighting for the flag like their life depends on it. But then Dimitri body slams Hawk but fails to run away with the flag. And then we see a technique from Dimitri we have never seen before because he smacks Hawk's arm and almost snaps it in half like a pretzel. Now me personally, if I'm Dimitri, I am not folding in this situation because I'm not forgetting the time I got jumped in the mall and also when I got my arm broken over some dojo beef. But anyways, Hawk starts cooking up because he does this little gymnastic flip and then kicks Dimitri to the floor. And Hawk being the realest homie tries lending Dimitri a hand so he gets back up just to give Hawk a nasty gut kick and then ends the fight in an instant. Like bro, I'm just sitting here trying to figure out how Dimitri is beating Hawk in a fight cause this has to be the most Mickey Mouse clubhouse win I've ever witnessed. They nerfed Hawk so badly it's actually starting to make me angry. I need a little word with the writers of Cobra Kai. Nah, matter of fact, it's gonna be more than just a little word. So now we get the 6 final contestants that are moving on to fight in the Sekai Taikai which are obviously Miguel, Sam, Robbie, Tori, Devon, and Dimitri. But now it's time to move on to the next episode. Alright, so Robbie and Miguel are about to fight to find out who's gonna be the team leader for the Sakai Taikai. And basically, first to three points wins the match. It's simple as that. And I'ma keep it real, coming into this fight, I had my parlay on my dog Miguel, but knowing how badly they ruined him, I wasn't surprised if Robbie actually took the match. Like, this man Miguel is not a fighter anymore, cause he really quit the All Valley tournament to go meet his deadbeat father in Mexico. He's only fighting cause Johnny is forcing him to, let's be real. So both of them get into fighting positions, like it's Goku versus Piccolo from Dragon Ball Z, the match of the century. But the match really kicks off with Miguel blocking a fury of blows from Robbie on the defensive and then he misses the high mm -hmm. kick but then hits the low kick and scores his first points against Robbie. And dog, look at how furious Miguel is right now. He still didn't forget how Robbie almost sent him into retirement back in season 2. Miguel is feeding for his revenge. And if there's one thing we know about Miguel, he does not play around when he's angry. Alright, so round 2 kicks off with Miguel hitting a weave block another dodge but Robbie hits a mink mink and then Miguel repeatedly starts kicking Robbie and then finishes the round with a vile kick straight to the dome like I know Robbie's head is buzzing right now he 100% just caught a new case of CTE my guy Miguel you did not have to hit him that hard so now the score is 2-0 to Miguel and when I was first watching this I'm like there's no way Miguel blows such a huge lead you just need one more and you win but nah this man Robbie turns into prime LeBron James because he pulls off the craziest comeback no to mankind just watch like as soon as tori walked into the dojo he knew it was go time he made sure his hair was on fleek and everything like why is bro mewing all of a sudden you're not slick buddy so round three commences with robbie hitting this maz morales flip into a missed kick but then miguel and robbie go hit for hit on one another but that's until robbie strikes with a mean right jab putting miguel into a pain but he knew sam was watching so he had to brush that off like it was nothing but hey now the score is 2-1 miguel Alright, so round 4 starts off with Miguel hitting this extremely high kick. Like, bro, who are you aiming at? This man Miguel really thinks he's fighting against Shaquille O'Neal. Because, bro, explain to me why your leg is over here, but Robbie's body is way down here. Like, this man Miguel really got cooked by Cutler back in Season 3 and lost all of his fighting ability since that day. This is not the same Miguel. He lost all of his aura. But Robbie starts getting extra confident because look at him dodging all of Miguel's moves with ease. He's really out here moving like Tobey 
Maguire from Spider-Man 1. This man, Robbie, really unlocked Ultra Instinct mid-fight. So Miguel blocks two blows from Robbie, gets kicked in the elbow, and then Robbie hits a Call of Duty trick shot straight to Miguel's head. Like, someone please sign this man onto FaZe Clan, because look at the accuracy on that kick. This man, Robbie, is just built different. And I know every single one of those lame Robbie stands are getting hyped right now, because he usually never ends up beating Miguel. He always comes up second. And now Sam starts giving Miguel that inspirational speech, telling him to get that win or else he will not make it into Stanford. But round number 5 officially begins and Robbie and Miguel start mimicking each other's moves, just throwing out whatever moves come to mind at this point. But then Robbie just takes Miguel to the ground like Undertaker, misses the finisher, but then they have this intense stare down like Naruto versus Sasuke. But then Miguel rushes in for the fatality but completely air balls. Like I actually can't tell if Miguel needs glasses to help him aim better or that he's just simply washed. And bro, at this point Miguel and Robbie are just running on low stamina because they start flailing their arms around but then Miguel literally gives Robbie his entire leg for free. Robbie then twists him around like a Beyblade and then lands the finishing blow on Miguel and the final point goes to Robbie, meaning that he's the winner and also the team captain for the Sekai Tech. And I was originally gonna cover the fight between Tori versus Sam but let's be honest, we, we do not care. care. But hey, that's the end of the video. I really hope you guys enjoyed. This was a very long one so might as well hit the subscribe button if you're here already. But yeah, I'll catch y'all later. I'm out.